I greet everybody in the house of God. Today, we're going to have the service of Holy Communion. I'm so happy to see each other's faces. It's so great to be in this atmosphere of the presence of God. David says, I'm going to seek your face from the early morning. And it's really, it's a great goodness for a person when he seeks the presence of God, his face. Because God is the major factor in our life, in our decisions. He defines our path. We can plan it's not in the power of man what he wants to do it's up to god and god blesses our paths when we are sincere when we look for his way it's an honor for us it's a joy for us to remember what he had done for us what a great mercy for us for each of us that who are we that we are now can take part and to have that relationships with God among all these people living on this earth God knocked at the door of our hearts and he revealed our eyes he opened up our hearts to learn him that's a great mercy that we are thankful for every day and to like I would like us to share with you the Word of God written in the book of Matthew 10 16 Matthew 10, 16, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as dolls. Well, this is the teaching God Jesus has given to his disciples when he sent him out to the ministry. The same he says a little later when he sent 70, sending out 70 stu um, stewards he gives the same instruction. This is the same instruction for the 12, for the 70, and for us. It touches all of us today. That's a great advice, great wisdom. It's addressing to us as well. So let us be ready to take it into consideration. And so I'd like us to look at this word first of all it's a pretty simple truth the first that we can see god is addressing the position of christians in this world i'm sending you out like sheep among wolves what does it mean to be sheep to be a sheep and this verse is divided into two parts the second part he gives that certain recommendations. So being as sheep, how we should live and how we should survive, let's say, and how could we, we could be wise and shrewd. God's wisdom having it in our life. The church is given that wisdom. Well, the position of Christians in this world, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. Wolves and sheep. Understanding the nature of these animals, it's pretty impossible to survive among wolves if you are a sheep. So at first sight, we see it's like it's a hopeless situation. I'm sending you, you are a sheep, but you have to be among wolves and you've got to survive somehow and minister to God. Yeah, many Christians survived persecutions and hardships written in Corinthians 4, 9. We, however, God judged us to be like, to die, because we are disgraced for angels for the world. 
But being as a Christian, being Christians, being those who keep God's commandments, of course, it's not easy to keep it. Living in that atmosphere of sin. But it doesn't mean that the whole world and surrounding people toward us, they are not, they are loose. No, it's not. The right people, like Apostle Paul says, I'm worried that upon my live, living, uh, there could be some deceitful people to distract you from God, to, involve, to get you involved in the sin, to influence you and your salvation in a bad way. But Christ says about different kind of sheep, well, there are a lot of people in this world who really have that salvation, and there are people who need salvation. Well, but still, there are such fields in our lives that being there, we could be compared like we live among wolves. It was not easy for apostles in their times. God delivered them. But in spite of our position in this world, in spite of our nature, like we are sheep, we are sheep of His yard. God is our shepherd. And among all, we should not be worried. We should not worry. Our safetyness, like if we are the sheep of His yard, we are safe. We are safe rather than in a better way compared to the wolves. God is my shepherd and he, and I shall not want. He lead me, he leads me to this still waters and he feeds me. This is a great comfort. So by sending the disciples into this world, God is delivering us at the same time. I'll be with you, he says, in all the days of your life till the end. I will keep you. I will leave you. I will protect you and take care of you, knowing the nature of sheep. You know, sheep are very sociable. They live in society. They can't live separately without each other. Sheep, in the Bible, that's a really noble animal. It's one of the noblest. It's the greatest in sacrifice when a man had a lot of sheep. It was a great value. A sheep was a great present. Sheep supplied with everything, with meat, with wool. And at the same time, they're very dependent on the sheep, on the shepherd. If a sheep is not fit, it might die. It needs to be taken care of should be cut, should be fed. It will be really hard for her to walk without being cut. Cows are completely different animals. If you want, if you take care of cows, cows should be guarded with two shepherds, but sheep are different. They can follow just one shepherd who is leading them in front of them. They hear the voice and then recognize the voice of their shepherd. They follow just one shepherd. So it's a great honor for us that we depend on him because he promised to take care of us, to lead us through temptations, through hardships, through sorrows. But he'll be with us, like Davis says. God, Jesus considered him like a sheep and he wasn't ashamed of this position. He always came up to God, to his protector, to the one he put trust on, to the one he trusted. And we see how marvelous his service was, King David. So his staff and his shepherd, his staff and his rod to protect is to protect the sheep from the wolf. 
So for us, in these words, there's a great comfort. Even God says, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. I'm with you. You need to feel in this life with God that you are sent by God to declare the gospel. So having this position, God is giving us is giving us two advice. Be wise as snakes. Be wise as snakes. God is giving us instructions. Be wise as snakes and be innocent as doves. Speaking about human wisdom, we realize that in certain circumstances, this worldly life sometimes might help us, but it doesn't mean that this wisdom belongs to God. There is a world wisdom and there is a godly wisdom. There was one philosopher, Spinoza, living in the 16th century. He, were, he had a background of Jewish people. He grew up in Orthodox, in Orthodox religion, but once he said, Happen, there's one thought from happiness to depression. Listen. There's one thought from happiness to depression, that's what this philosophy living in the 16th century said. Well, but is he right? Isn't he wrong? No, he's pretty right. But for us Christians, it doesn't really suit us. We should not live in this condition. We as Christians, as believers, it's not just a thought, it's an attack of Satan. So we just come against this negative thoughts. So living in peace, you move on and your heart is filled with joy. But there are so many people here who live with this wisdom, world wisdom. I don't want to say bad thoughts about those philosophers. Yeah, rationalism was given by that philosopher. He was somehow right, uh, speaking about natural human needs concerning what people experience. But we as Christians, we have the wisdom of God. Remember like Apostle Paul says in Corinthians, chapter 2, declaring the wisdom of God among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. It's not the wisdom of this age. So Paul defines there's the wisdom of this age and God's wisdom. So God is giving us his um, heavenly wisdom. So be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. The wisdom of a snake, that wisdom, it comes from the Greek word Sophia, from the Greek language, but Aphronim is a different word that is mentioned in the Bible by the word of wisdom. It means such a wisdom that is used in, in special obstacles when there is a threat or um, a very threatening th uh, situation. So knowing the nature of wisdom, you know, one day we were at a cafe with my wife, and it was in the south of Russia, and I saw a snake, a black snake, but as soon as uh, moved, it immediately swept away, it immediately slid away. And so by doing that, the snake is really careful. The, the snake is doing everything to avoid conflicts. That's the wisdom. Be as wise as snakes. Try to avoid all kinds of conflicts. Like Apostle Paul says, if possible, be in peace with everybody. It's a great advice. 
there's a lot of wisdom in this word so when you live in family when you live in big family if possible be in peace with everybody if you find if you are at work if you're in social among, among social people you need to have wisdom to avoid conflicts well in this world yeah this kind of wisdom really helps us to survive so when we knowing the God is sending us in this world to preach the gospel let us have this wisdom to avoid conflicts like Apostle Paul says in, in Acts 17 when Paul came to uh, Athens he was upset by having lots of idols in the city but as soon as Paul had a chance to preach the gospel verse 23 having Paul says having passed and looked at your home, saints I saw a monument that is committed to unknown God that you honor it so I'm preaching this God to you and Paul was indig in, in, in indignated by ha by looking at all these idols among Athens and you are idolatrous you go to hell that he could have easily preached um, in that direction but he didn't no he started preaching the gospel with praising them by letting them know that you did great that you made that monument to that living God and that's the God I'm preaching to and he is inspiring them like you'd better worship this living God rather than this idols but he didn't he, his purpose was to gain people for Christ so he says going through your holy places I've noticed a monument to the unknown God that you honor that's the wisdom he avoids the conflicts that's the wisdom to go along with it to win souls for Christ to use it in everyday situations we'll live in such a time that we've got to have that peaceful spirit not so them arguing the fighting but so the peace our ministry as Christ says God is giving us the ministry of reconciliation God has given us the ministry of reconciliation reconciliation I remember one example from my personal life I parked at a place at a parking area and I saw this man looking at me without letting me drive so but I tried to park as close as possible and I see he's going to cross my road he he, he didn't behave quite adequate so I was past driving him by and by accident accidentally um we touched each other's mirrors from the car and I see he's going to argue me getting off the car as soon as I get out of the car I didn't listen to his curse I says immediately I am so sorry I didn't really understand that you were going to pile too far and he immediately stopped okay your answer is quite worthy and he was shocked by my peaceful answer but if I said why are you standing here we would have that conflict of course I'm not gonna speak more about that story but in each of us there are some situations when we make our mind when we take a decision whether we develop let's say our conflict or it's in our power to stop this conflict and to stop arguing it's up to us whether we argue or not so that's the practical wisdom of God sometimes it's hard for us to use that wisdom uh, meaning that it's not actually um, 
It's just the avoiding conflicts without any fighting, without any arguing. It's easy to get into conflict. But when you have that wisdom, when your soul and your character is not perfect enough, when you use that wisdom, it will, it will always bring you peace in everything. When people want to attack you, just avoid these conflicts. Don't get, don't get into the arguing. If it's possible, avoid the arguing. That's a, that's a Jewish wisdom. It is great in all kinds of attitudes, relationships. If a brother or sister are okay to live with each other, find peace. But if you want to, if someone wants to get divorced, let it not be your decision, your initiative, but theirs. Who doesn't want to live with you? Let them take that responsibility. Amen, brothers, sisters. Be innocent as doves. Be as, as plain as dove. Be as innocent as doves, or we can say be as plain as dove. The word plain means without any additional solution, or be as innocent as doves. Just the way you are, pure, pure hearted. Let your word be yes, then yes, no, then no. A dove would always goes back home. The dove always knows where its house. That's the bird is quite noble. The dove is not the symbol of peace. This dove represents relationships between. And while sometimes, you know, speaking about doves, they are so close to each other, all doves. And there's another peculiarity in the dove. They have really good eyes, but they don't have the eye the, the side. The doves can only see what's in front. They don't have the side eye sight in order to see some what something is happening on his on its right or on its left. They have to turn their heads to the right or to the left. Well, there are so many distractions for Christians in this world today. It distracts our attention from God, from the Word of God, from the prayer. There are a lot of vanity today that without noticing that we go deep down in it and getting in this condition that all of a sudden when we want to leave that circle it's quite impossible because we are hostages we we became we become hostages in that circles that someone dictates us. So we set the regimes and algorithm in our lives. So let us be always concentrate on God, on the Word, on a prayer, without distracting ourselves. Be as innocent, as plain as does. You know, there is a difficult person. What what a difficult person, what does a difficult person mean to you? Well, but there's a Russian saying, who can carry, he will be carried on. When people are quite plain, it's easy for them, for you to make a deal. But when it's a difficult person, you don't know whether he or she get offended with you or not. You don't know their reactions, and you don't know how to talk to them, what kind of attitude you should have to toward them. It's hard for you to ask or to talk. Let us just be plain and be simple with each other. 
If you are late, confirm you're late. Admit you're late. If you do something wrong, admit you did it wrong. Don't get your life complicated. People really suffer due to their difficulties in their characters. They suffer in marriages, especially in marriages. That's the first circle. That's the your husband, your close people. If you have that tension, you don't know how to behave. But that simplicity should be in your life. Let me also tell you another important thing. Apostle Paul is written in the book of Romans. Romans 16. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Jesus, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive, of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good good and innocent about the evil what is evil. The Bible says, watch out the ones who, who get causes divisions, who does such unseen but destructive things for church. He says, those divisions can influence people. You know, speaking about um, different kinds of instruments, there are some people who really mm, doesn't really like having drums during present worship, and they start to cause causing divisions. Someone likes this one preacher, another dislike this preacher. And they sow the seeds in people's hearts. And these seeds are quite destructive. So just be attentive to your words. Try to keep your emotions if they are quite negative. We don't get, don't cause those divisions. Well, it's hard for others to get into the presence of God. Try to be careful um, speaking about Christians, speaking about your brothers and sisters. May God give you, may God like, give you this wisdom and that innocent situations in your life. Jesus says, I have to suffer and die. And by telling that, they didn't really pay attention to Jesus' words. They started arguing about who is going to take place on Jesus' right side and on his left side. But even at these situations, didn't Jesus didn't judge them. But he, al he alerts Peter. Peter, before the rooster cries out, I was praying about you so that your faith will not get weird. These disciples were loved by Jesus. That meekness, I really like that word, meek. Matthew, bless other meek, he will inherit the land. The meek people, meek goes after humbleness. It's even higher than humbleness. When we are meek, God is expecting from us to humble and to be meek. Moses says he was the meekest one, but sometimes he revealed anger, and it was the right anger. So, it's understanding 
whether you should reveal yourself, whether you should draw back yourself, whether you should keep silent, but sometimes whether you, in, in some aspects, you have to stand for the truth. So humbleness and meekness are the synonyms. When we look at our Jesus, he was very meek. He was humble. Yeah, he showed a certain way, a certain degree of anger, but when he personally was mocked at, he kept silent. He didn't reply. He took it on himself. So may God give us that wisdom. And he is worthy now. Philippians says, as he humbled himself, God praised him. And the name of our God, Jesus Christ, is above all the names in heaven, uh, in, under heaven, in, in earth, and on earth, and under the earth. He was humble. He became that Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. He became the one who took sins upon himself. He became the one who showed the example. in the life so let us look on him in your situations they could be difficult it could be difficult to have some emotions but look at the way god was going through the circumstances how he survived how he buried the hardships Let's look at him he is the one who can give you power, give you grace and help in your obstacles. May God bless you. We will now pray and take part in Holy Communion. Apostle Paul, chapter 11. Apostle Paul says in the verse of 23, for I received from the Lord that I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord is unworthy. Manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without descending the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. So before we pray for this bread and wine, let us all get up. Let's all get on our feet and i would like to pray for those who have been reconciled with the lord if you are here for the first time holy spirit is knocking at the doors of your hearts maybe you have already been to the church but god is knocking at your hearts please open it up because he wants to come into your life ask your forgiveness and forgive you and give the peace to you and bless you. So, so that you would be the child of God. You would be saved and your name would be written in the book of life. So whenever your earthly life is finished, it comes to an end. The scripture says that those who reconcile with him, those who believe in him and confess him as his Lord and personal Savior might have that inheritance of the kingdom. If you are that man and you need salvation, please let me see your hands. I want to pray for you. Are there any people, if you really need the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior, if you are here, please let me see your hand. And we will pray for you and bless you. 
Maybe you're watching us online. If you watch us online, you can repeat these words after me out loud. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. And I ask you, please forgive all my sins. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for me on the cross. And he died on the cross. He rose again in my justification. Jesus Christ, be my Lord and my Savior. I give my life to you. Bless me and keep me for your kingdom. I praise your holy name and I worship you. Your almighty God, Heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.